copies. Uh, I'm meta programming enthusiast. So from time to time, I'm trying to take some interesting feature from other languages and features at all. So today I wanted to show you how you can implement anonymous type from C sharp in C plus plus twenty. So basically, what anonymous type is, it's um, so as on screenshot you can see Microsoft reference. So basically, this feature allows you to create type inside of example function uh, with declaring um, fields, uh, its values, and then access these uh, fields using uh, dot operator. So you. It looks pretty interesting because you don't need really to create one more class, one more structure, declare all fields, types, and other stuff. So I was thinking, so it it might be um, possible to implement such feature in C++. So with C++ 20 standard, it become possible. So this talk will be about how to do that. So our agenda will be a representation of requirements for this feature. So when, when you start to implementing some feature, you better to divide it in some requirements so you can easily implement it one by one and then achieve basically the full feature which you want. So in this case, you need uh, start with declaring field with name and type. So the, uh, to declare some field with some type, it's not the problem for C++. You can basically just insert a template and go with it. So problem comes with name. So we need to specify it as a requirement. So next requirement will be fields container. So what does it mean? It means basically when we declare some structure, uh, we may expect that this structure will hold a um, value of another structure. So basically we have structure inside of the structure. So this case should be also be handled. Get field by name. So basically, as you saw on previous slide, you, after instantiate, instantiating um, anonymous structure, you can access its field by dot operator. So we want to have something similar in C++. Um, handle corner cases. So basically, when you have a um, case, for example, your structure is holding one field, and probably this field may be, may be some string. In this case, you need just to uh, have ability to access its value. When it will be another structure, so structure inside structure case, uh, then you will need to treat it differently. So in this case, you need to somehow handle this case. Uh, then uh, any feature is, uh, does not worth to implement it if it doesn't have use case. So in this case, I pick up serialization. So basically JSON serialization, you need to go over all fields and then um, using JSON formatting, you need to create uh, output is string, which basically represent JSON. So, and then to have more similar in uh, terms of complexity, in terms of user API, we want some syntax sugar. So we, in next slides, you will know, you will realize what I mean by that. So we want to write in place, create um, structure with just give it names and values rather than typing uh, every information that could be taken from our input. So let's start with simple one. Uh, it's compile time string. So I had already talked about it when I was presenting generating of methods. So it has pretty same structure. So you have some struct you can see on screenshot on the left. Basically what it does, it has constructor constructor, which takes as argument array, stores it, and then you can just compare it using um, templates. So basically if you have um, experience with storing integral values as template arguments, then you can use in pretty same way fixed string class because C++ 20 allows you to do that with any structure which has context per constructor. Then you also should uh, write deduction guide uh, so you can use it as it is specified on the screen shot on the right. So basically you have some structure field 
it has a template parameter name of type fixed string and some type uh, of value it holds. And then you can basically it use like this. You just writing field, entering name as uh, char, uh, array, because it calls basically this constructor and pass the type of value which you want to store. So coming to the next more complex question, it's when you have like more than one field in your structure. So imagine you have like some plain old data and you want to store it. So as an anonymous track. So basically you can reuse tuple and then pass all the values to this tuple and initialize this tuple as this. Um, so user will see basically this class. So it will see that it has some struct field, it has name. So basically you can imagine it as simple struct. So you have, for example, struct, um, I don't know, uh, buffer for, for example. And as type, there will be some int which will be representing the count of the, of the buffer and probably some char array. And then you will pass it as arguments to the fields container. Fields container is just basically a separated functionality which will be reused. Since we have like a lot of corner cases, sometimes it becomes a little bit noisy to duplicate this code. So it was uh, taken out as and named as fields container. Then you can use it as basically this. So for now, uh, there was no declaration of anon, but you can imagine it as fields, as field. So if you, you replace this anon with field, you can re you can create struct uh, basically like this. You're saying, so okay, this struct will have field with uh, name int. So basically it's like simple C struct, but you cannot take the pair int because it keyword int, but you may name it differently for example as nested one and then you're saying well, what this uh, nested field will have fields so basically it's the case when you have structure inside of the structure then you can do same thing with structure inside structure inside structure just um, just the way that this complex functionality works so you can easily do that and more simple cases when you declare some field, name it a string and store it as type as the string. When it comes to initializing this type, you basically, as you see, it was stored as using. You can uh, write that you want some variable of type, this type struct, and then initialize these um, fields. So the reason why, um, so my, okay. Uh, let's let's consider it as question. Have anybody from slide of the left can realize why on the slide on the right we are using square brackets um, for every field argument? So if you know or probably thinking that you know, you may speak up and say, what are your guesses? Right, uh, so I will say it for you. So basically we are using square brackets here to call constructor of fields. Since we are specifying all the types here in template arguments, and then reusing this type inside the contray, inside the constructor. When we call constructor, um, it already knows which types it expects. And when you are typing square brackets, it implicitly call, not implicitly, explicitly calls the constructor of this type that's specified here. Since it's variadic, it will call for every variadic argument constructor. So if we have any question here. This thing might not work with references. So example, if you specify here field int and int will be not int but int reference, it might not work. Right, uh, so accessing the 
fields. So when we are talking about accessing the fields, so in structure, in classes, we are basically writing object. We are writing um, name of the object we have created and then pressing dot and naming and writing the name of variable which we want access in this track. So probably we want to have similar uh, ability for our anonymous field. Since we are declaring fields, we are naming it. Probably we want to access fields um, using their names. So for this case, I'm creating method get which um, receive as template argument because it's one of the way to have const expert variable and it allows us to get everything that can be calculated on compile time. So we are having method get which accepts as variadic uh, fixed string. So why variadic? It's because we can have nested structures Meaning like if we go, want to go inside um, one structure and then this structure has one more structure and we want to go inside this structure and so on, we might want to go all over this names so of the structures and resulting fields. So in this case, we would want to have variadic one. So we have override here. And the reason for get info function is because we don't want to duplicate this code in every function since there it's all will be the same. So the implementation will be pretty simple. So C++ allows you to declare type inside of the function. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm declaring class that inherits from every field. Since I'm not instantiating it, uh, I'm not really need to consider if it's a default construct, if we move construct or another stuff. All I need to do the, here is um, to get concrete uh, field type based on name. So for this purpose, I'm, also, I'm creating the structure which inherits all fields because it allows me to ask compiler for um, better for um, field to which it may be casted. Uh, because we are inheriting all of the fields, uh, these fields contains its own names. We can specify name and some possible types it has. We are not really cared about the types it, uh, it holds. We are cared about for the type. But since we only know field name, that's the reason why a template parameter here will be only T variadic. Then we are creating basically using, which is basically just result of the um, lambda function, which basically represents, which basically just asks um, compiler to pick up field with this name, which is to which we can cast our combiner. And since it is uh, inherited from all fields, but name would be unique. I don't think that anybody would expect have um, two fields with same names in structure. And um, it will result in the thing that we will have like full field type, which uh, we have stored, including name and all the fields it contains. And then in the result, we are checking if we have some more um, names uh, left. So basically, if we are going inside of the struct, inside, inside, and so on, we may have more than one um, field name. And because of that, we are checking. If it's a uh, final name, then we are returning this field. If not, then we are going to proceed it with the field we already pick up. So we basically have struct inside of the struct. Then because of that, we are going inside first track, we find it by the name. Then we are checking if we need uh, to proceed with next names. If there is no, we are returning the struct that we already pick up. If not, we are doing the same flow with struct we have received here. And doing with it here uh, by std get from the tuple. So because we know full the name, we can use just tuple with 
std get specifying type, not the index of the um, field. So if you want to ask some questions, you can easily do that right now. Right, let's go, let's proceed to this next slide. So corner cases. So as I was mentioning before, uh, we might um, run in the case, we not might, but we definitely will go in the case when we have structure with one field and this field can be some std string, which we expect to have just value or it might be another structure which will have uh, fields rather than value. So for this case, we should um, somehow distinguish them. So as you can see, when we are declaring field, uh, we are saying it will have value. But to, but to handle case when we have structure, and structure does not have value but have fields, we are creating a partial specialization for this one. So basically we are saying, so okay, it will be field, it will have also name, and the second will be the field with the fields. So it be so it will have not value, but it have it will have some field. Since we are caring only about one field because we are partial specialization only in this case, it's enough to say that. Okay, if it will receive field as type, then it fields container. If not, pick up this one, it will be just the value. And we are also interested in case when we are declaring our struct, anonymous struct, because in this case, it will not be actually the struct because it will not have any name. So in this, for this case, we are declaring separate structure uh, with which basically just reuses um, fields container which will have fields so i guess it's uh, simpler than things that were before so we are proceeding and visiting fields so basically if we are thinking of practical case using it so as json serialization probably just iterating over fields or maybe some other stuff we want somehow to iterate over it so when I was implementing uh, JSON serialization, I ran into the problems that you don't have, that you should handle cases like comma in array, you should have like, like comma only between elements. You cannot have comma like trailing comma or comma before first element. It, it a little bit complicates um, the flow because you should somehow provide user API, which allows you, that allows him to handle the, such cases. Um, also, I had problems with um, getting the type of parent. So basically when you have like structure inside structure, you want to, when you have structures with fields, you want to know how this structure is called when you are outputting, for example, in JSON, right? If you have like sending some data, it may be have a lot of structure with structures and you want to say that this structure is named so, and it has such fields and to get this, structure name it also allow, it also requires to provide um, users some api to handle it so for this case um, i used some uh, class user um, named as fields visitors so basically what it does it um, it writes over fields and using um, operator opera, invoke operator it's uh, it has different overloads depending on it has fields or it has just value. So using Sfinai, um, I'm checking if uh, it should pick up this invoke operator, which has code exactly for, for structure with fields, or it should pick up um, field with value to handle it. So in case of uh, struct, when we have fields, not value, 
uh, we are declaring um, Sphena, not declaring Sphena, we are using Sphena, which uh, tries to evaluate this expression. So if uh, we have value, uh, it will just result if in EU formed uh, expression and this overload will not be picked up. So it will be ignored. If we have fields, then we are invoking um, this lambda function with uh, all elements of tuple as variadic. So you can see here, we are passing it as variadic universal reference. Then we are declaring some kind of iterator, which allows us to, uh, which allows user to continue visiting fields uh, of structure. So basically, as I was mentioning the case in JSON, when you don't, you cannot have like trailing comma, you cannot have prepending comma, you should have it only between um, elements. In this case, a user should be a, able to do such complex things. So this iterator allows him to proceed with um, visit, visiting fields of the field if he wants to, if he doesn't want to, or if he wants to uh, some uh, specific uh, uh, process for specific field, he can a, easily do that with this uh, next uh, iterator. So basically just invocable, which uh, can invoke um, fields visitor uh, for the field. And then we are pick up inquisitor. So user should be able to differently handle field with value and field with fields. Because if you have like fields with value, you want just to, for in case of JSON, you just want to output this value. You are saying like um, double comma, name double comma, colon and double comma, for example, um, quote and value and quote. In this case, uh, um, you want to differently uh, uh, handle case with value. For fields, when you have structure with fields, you want to print name of the parent and go over all fields and basically put comma between those fields, not uh, prepending or trailing. For value, it's it uh, looks a little bit easier with just invoking this operator because we don't have like fields, we just have value, we are passing it through and uh, allow user to do everything he wants to because he, he cannot really iterate uh, farther. That, that's the reason why we don't need uh, iterator like next. So serialization, um, it's the screen might not be up to date, but however, the main concept of it is that we are using this fields visitor that was on previous slide. We are passing two lambdas. First one is, uh, is showing how we should treat uh, structure with fields. And second lambda is showing how we should treat uh, GSO, uh, field with value. So you can see here, we are uh, checking if it's, uh, so this if consp uh, should have a little bit of comments. However, I will add them right now. So if if consp expert is std same and the root thing here, that the core thing here is uh, that we are saying that it should be the field with uh, empty name. So for empty name, you can, you can realize it that it is root of anonymous struct, right? If you are declaring anonymous struct, you are not giving it any name. So in this case, it will be the root of anonymous struct. In this case, if it's not the root, then we are uh, saying, okay, let's output name with quotes and um, colon to proceed with uh, next, um, sorry, uh, for uh, next fields. Um, so then we want to proceed with fields. So we want to output our fields uh, as they should be output. So depending on their structure, uh, depending if it's value, if it's structure is fields. Because of that, we are using a next operator and also prepending it with um, 
curly brackets because we say we know that this lambda will involve only structure with fields and basically that's what we're receiving here and before uh, processing these fields we are printing out uh, curly brackets then we are proceeding with our field visitor for first field uh, since uh, this lambda accepts variadic arguments we can easily uh, say that okay let's handle first separately and all the rest we can handle an info expression for example or pass it to another function we don't really care we are caring about first element because of uh, we need comma between elements to satisfy these requirements we can just print first and then prepend every next element with comma so that's what we are doing here using fold expression it looks a little bit verbose with these old brackets however basically what you have here you have that json uh, sh string should be prepared with comma before next before every next um, visit of uh, another field so all fields that are presented this structure, we want to prepend them with comma and then finish it all with curly brackets, closing curly brackets. And when it comes to the uh, field with the value, it's a little bit, it's more, far more uh, easier. We just, uh, depending on the type of uh, field value, which it stores, we are outputting it. So basically we're saying, okay, name, quote name quote column in and then we are saying what the value of this field so to invoke this field visitor we're just passing the anonymous track to it so two main ideas is here that we are treating separately uh, when we have structure with fields and structure with value and we are treating differently if we have root value or not root value. If we want to treat differently, we have like first field separate named separately from uh, variadic arguments. And to have information about parent, we are passing the pointer to parent. Why pointer? Because we want to know info about type of parent, but not really parent value because it will be already handled either by this yeah by this function will be handled and then we are just when we want we are proceeding with visiting field as user wants to so probably we have a question here probably something not not really sure what this means what this means or other stuff Right, um, so syntax sugar. So as I have shown on the slide here, we had not really user-friendly structure. We need to create template specialization, say field, name, specify name. Then when we are initializing, we should, then we duplicating the value we should know about a name which we will specify and construct. It's a little bit not we want to use. So to overcome this issue, we're creating something like literal, you may saw literals for strings, for string view and other stuff. It was a trailing operator. So I wanted such concept, but for fields for anonymous track. So basically what it does, it allows you to create field based on name, which you will pass as template argument and then pass uh, the value and basically the value. And by passing the value, compiler does know which um, type name should be used. 
and then it creates this um, field and returns it. Since we have in field deduction guide, it's just basically creates a structure from the values that was that were passed to the constructor, and basically resulting will be looks like this. You are saying, okay, create anonymous struct. Uh, we are oh sorry, we are using uh, this literal that was shown before. We are saying, okay, its name, okay, its value. It knows the you cannot you can really really go without this uh, specifying of the type. I just wanted to show that you can say explicitly what name you want. You may also do this here, but then the concept of literal becomes useless. Then you can uh, go with nested structures like this, even though you have like only one value, it works fine. You can have double uh, nested structure. And I think you can go with triple nested, four nested and so on. I don't think it will break anything. So if there is no questions, I may go to the demo. If you have one, you can ask it. Right, I think there is no questions. So let me share my screen with online compiler. So I will go to the main to have a little bit structure with them. So first of all, I want to show how it works uh, without syntax sugar. So we have function here anonymous anonymous structure demo. So basically, what it does, it initializes template. It specific, uh, does template specialization for our parameters. So we want field with int with name int type of int and structure and string. Then we expect that it will result in such JSON. So value is taken from here. And basically we expect that it will be int with quotes, um, which have value one, nested, string, and so, so, so on. Then we are um, visiting it with JSON. So JSON demo, it's the thing that I have shown below uh, before. On the slides, we have visitor for fields, we have visitor for, for value, then we are invoking it and comparing if it's as expected as we want. So if we look, take a look at compiler output, we can see that it results as we want to. Unfortunately, it for some reason is truncated and I cannot really move it to the leader, to the left. So we have uh, so result of this of serialization of this structure is it is this. We expect this JSON, which is also printed here. If it's as expected, yes, it is. So let's proceed. So talking about case when we want to access variable in C sharp, I think it's not the case when you can modify its value. However, here to demonstrate that it works in C++, um, I have code snippet here. So basically we are creating a structure. So it will have like a next view. What we really are interested in is nested string. So basically we have structure. We are accessing, we are trying to find a field with name nested. It's here. And we want uh, inside of this uh, nested structure, we want to find um, field with name string. So here it is, it is string one. So when we will try to output it, we'll have like current value is string one. Okay, it's the thing we would expect. Then we want to modify it. So since I'm storing it as a reference, I am rep I'm editing assigned new value to the actual value that is stored in this side, inside this struct, not to the copy. Then I'm trying to using pretty same code 
So as you can see, even compiler is highlighting that code is similar, not similar, but identical. And then it's outputting our new value. New value is here. So I may even add some new value and it should recompile with new, as you see. So that's how get works. You basically call method get as template parameter, you are passing the keys. Uh, keys is basically the name of fields. So when you go inside the nested, you want inside this nested um, want to find string. You can basically go with um, string, for example, I bet it goes like this. So we have inside of this um, structure, we have uh, just simple string name. We can uh, access it by just printing in a uh, string here. Or we can do try to get int. It will say error because it has different type, right? As expected, let's um, set value, for example, 500. So previous way, value, all right, I see the problem here. So previous value was one, current value is 50, uh, 500. So the reason why it's uh, current value is 500 is because of this sign here. Uh, reason for initial value one is here. So we have one here. And demonstration of basically syntax sugar. So where it is? Oh, it is here. So basically, we are creating anonymous structure rather than um, specifying the type of fields, names, fields, and then reusing this uh, using and uh, initialized structure. We can do this in place. So basically, we are saying we are using our literal f, which specifying the name, specifying the value we want to store. Then we specify, for example, nested structure, structure with nested, nested structure with nested structure. And for example, just sample simple, just some simple string. We expect this JSON. So we have int, we have nested with string, we have nested with string with double, nested with string with double, and for string same, and then we are comparing it. So the result JSON, the JSON we have expected. Is it, is it as expected? Yes, it is. So yeah, I was pretty, not pretty quick, but for the time it was scheduled. So maybe there is some questions. Maybe you're interested if some hypothetically failing case how it would work or I don't know maybe you want to test some way of syntax sugar working no questions I think so so thank you, Boris, very much for your performance. Uh, thank you, Adam and Marius, for being with us till the end. Hope to see you in our next community event. Uh, wishing everyone for a great day. Hi. Bye-bye. Have a great day.